the next question is, can we reduce bullying? Are we reducing bullying? Um, and so I'm going to turn to uh, a meta-analysis. And if you don't know what a meta-analysis is, essentially, essentially it's just a summary of a body of literature. And in this case, it tells us how are we doing as far as reducing bullying perpetration and victimization. So um, this group, Tofty and Farrington, went in and they found 44 program evaluations. And what they wanted to do is take those 44 program evaluations and summarize uh, the extent to which the components of the programs that led to reductions in bullying perpetration, led to reductions in peer victimization, and identify the exact components that were driving those reductions. And so there was 44 that they found, and again, this is a little bit old, it's 2011, and they're currently redoing it. But you can imagine with the White House conference in 2011 from Obama that there's been a lot more studies. But this will give you some sense of how challenging this work is. Most of the programs they evaluated was based on the Norwegian program by Dan Olveus, who's a pioneer in the area of bullying. Um, and what they found overall is 20 to 23 percent decrease in bullying perpetration and 17 to 20 percent decrease in victimization. Now you notice that's not 100, right? It's not even close to 100. So we clearly have a long way to go. So even when we have great programs, we're still only reducing it to upwards of 20 percent, right? So there's still 80 percent of the bullying that's hap still happening. Now. It's very informative when you look at this meta-analysis to then say, okay, you've got that reduction, but what do you need to have going in your schools to achieve that reduction? And again, not a stellar reduction. We still have many kids. Most of the time when we have effective programs, we still have four to five kids that are chronically victimized in a classroom. So there's still a lot of work to be doing, done. And I wouldn't say that anything's proven. So to get that 17 to 20% reduction in victimization, what do you need? Well, start with non-punitive disciplinary methods. That means you're not suspending and expelling as a form of disciplinary um, actions. Parent training, use of videos, cooperative group work. Now, the cooperative group work in this meta-analysis was teaching teachers to do cooperative group work with the kids, right? And so we've known for years, the Johnsons and Johnsons, they, they know that cooperative group work does create pro-social spaces, and it's clear that this contributes to reductions in victimization. But they found that the greater duration and the intensity of the program really led to this. So you can imagine that's a lot of work to ask schools that are already kind of overworked, um, but that's what you're going to need to get that reduction of 17 to 20%. Now, what's nice about meta-analysis is that what they also showed what worked, they showed what made things worse. And peer mediation, when you sit a bully and a victim down, which you shouldn't do that, right, If because it, if it's truly a bullying situation, there's a power differential, and therefore you're just re-victimizing the victim. And they showed in this meta-analysis that if you did just peer mediation, which you shouldn't be doing, and we've said this for years, actually the victimization went up. So it's nice that this, actually, this really, um, really was helpful. We've been saying it for years. Okay, now you need to kind of take a big old breath because if you want to reduce bullying perpetration at that 20%, you need parent training, improved playground supervision, non punitive disciplinary methods, classroom management, teacher training, classroom roles, whole school anti-bullying, cooperative group work, and all of that, you need all of that to achieve that 20%. Right? So the, many of you out there, you just recognize this is not easy to move this needle. It takes a lot of work. And even when you have these ideal components, you still are only reducing it by 20%. And you should know that in North America, the programs are less effective in the U.S. and Canada.